personnel has done in executive session. But I want you to know what Coach Madison has done in my life to see what that he's a very special coach that cares about each and every athlete that he's coached. How am I connected to Coach Madison? First off, I played for Mark back in 1975-76, long time ago, at Kemmer East on the varsity basketball team. I was a player that loved basketball, and Mark brought out the best in me. He not only taught me about the game of basketball, but taught me how to be successful in life. You see, after basketball is over, what do you have? I wasn't good enough to play in college, but he taught me how to be successful and to challenge myself. He helped guide me to decide to go to Brockport to be a physical education teacher and coach. And this was a way for me to keep involved with the game of basketball that I love so much, even though my playing career was over. Coach Madison took the time to always be there for me and answer any questions that I had about my future. I came from a broken home with an alcoholic father. Mark was kind of, excuse me, a little emotional. Mark was kind of my second dad. He was always there for me. I mean, always. So after graduating from college, I was able to come back and coach with Mark for 10 years as his JV coach. He taught me a lot about the game of basketball, and I was pretty successful that I was able to then obtain the head varsity basketball coach's job at Star Point Central, where I taught for 36 years. Again, Mark helped me with being a reference and would always talk to me weekly to see how I was doing and if I needed anything. What coach cares about you after that long period of time that he was in touch with you? We even played at the same time in the Great Martin Tip-Off Tournament right here at Iroquois. I think I won. No. <laughs> um, so after retiring from Star Point in 2016, I was hired as an athletic director at Christian Central Academy where I am now. Being an athletic director has given me a greater insight into how athletics are to be directed and understanding of the whole process of hiring and if you need to be firing coaches. First off, as a coach, Mark is just a first class person with high character, treats all athletes the same. Of course, coaches will talk to other players more than others, um, but knowing Mark for more than 40 years, he cares about all of them. I witnessed that as a player as a coach with him for 10 years, and then as a coach playing against him. If I had a young son right now, my son is 32, but I would want Mark to be the first coach that he would be able to play for. By the way, thanks to Mark, I think I've been pretty successful in life as a player, coach, and now athletic director. So I evaluate my coaches at my school. I don't know how you do it here, but I'm hoping that they do. And I go over that evaluation <coughs> every coach. So some questions, has Mark been evaluated? Have they been negative anyway? If they are, usually you give an opportunity for coaches or teachers that receive a poor grade to get better. Um, back at Star Point, we had a, a TAP program where you would work on, on helping them to get better, not just eliminate them. So teachers and coaches should be informed of the weaknesses and given a time frame to make improvements. By the way, there's no perfect coach. Mark is very passionate, dedicated, I think he's been very successful here from what I've read in the paper, and his record in longevity should speak for itself. I pray that this is not a dismissal based upon a few disgruntled parents, and that the majority of you people here want to as your coach. Thank you for your time. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to speak. Madison. The program has done very well, 
and the players have been providing an experience that most public school baseball players do not have. They train in Florida before we can even get outside here in Alma. This is a result of the dedication and hard work of Coach Madison and Coach Schneider, along with volunteers like Keith Madison and Terry Hill. They've provided invaluable practice and game experience in Florida by working year round to plan this trip. I know firsthand how much time and energy these coaches put into this valuable learning and practice experience. It's a full year commitment to the Iroquois baseball program. They did this for the love of the game and for the betterment of our children. <clears throat> They've created an experience that I believe is one of a kind for most kids and perhaps their most memorable experience that they'll look back on in their high school career. I can't believe that as a board and as a superintendent that we cannot provide them with one more year to complete this program on their terms. Everything they have created in this program makes me feel that they deserve to be treated better and given an opportunity to end their work their way. It's my sincere hope that you'll take into account the hard work and dedication that coaches Madison and Snyder have provided at Iroquois and grant them a final year to run the baseball program. I'd like to recognize Tom Prince, please. Thank you, Mark, for giving me a chance to talk. I honestly didn't plan on talking tonight, I won't lie to you. I didn't know that I was going to come up here and talk, but I do want to give you a look into kind of the baseball community. For those of you who don't know, I've been with Western New York Athletics, I've been with Channel 2. I've now covered everything baseball-wise when it comes here in high school sports. So I see every school, I see every player, I see every coach, I see what they do. I not only do that, I see it from a perspective from the point of view from the youth program that's about to come up. Okay, so I see the kids that are about to come up that are the 13, 14, 15 new players that are your modified and JV kids that are about to come up because I coach against them. This program in Iroquois is going to be unbelievable. What's the future hold for them? Okay, it really does. You've got right now a leader to me that goes above and beyond. I'm telling you, so as what you see in the baseball community. Okay, I know you've got a coach asking here for one more year. I could go around to so many schools and I can tell you this. I don't see coaches and all the time going to the point where every single summer they're running three different teams to make sure all these kids get an opportunity and be seen by their coach. There are so many schools right now that have 20, 30, 40 kids trying out for their teams and they see one coach that gets a chance to see them. Here's a coach that is actually making sure that can be seen over the summer before they even get a chance to do it through this pal league. Three teams, that's unheard of, you guys. To, to, to see a coach care that much about his kids to prepare them for what they've got to do. The Florida trips, I know just about every school's doing right now, but if you don't think that's chaos to put together, <laughs> especially when you're talking about going down there, running it, putting it together, it's just unbelievable what it entails. And to be honest with you, you know what it entails the most? is a team coming together as one. That's really what it brings together. And I know, because I'll tell you this, I coach a team right now that is 14 years old this past year. I can't tell you how many parents came up to me personally, had pulled me aside, and gave me their opinion about this whole thing. And it never was, boy, I, I, this isn't the right person for the job. It was every single one who told me lengthy stories about why Marv needs to be here. He is, you know, he's a very passionate guy at what he does. And you're now talking about a guy that deserves, at least in my eyes, one more year to see it. I mean, 20 years at one school, think about how many baseball coaches right now can say that. I could count them on my hand. Not only that, most of them are being recognized inside the Hall of Fame because of it. You have Hall of Fame coaching. I'm gonna tell you, he will be looked at in the Hall of Fame. Seeing it one more year through, I think will do a lot of people 
very good, not only in the community, here on the board, everywhere else, just to see the final group, to see Mark there. Mm -hmm. And I know, I, Mark may not be here tonight, but I bet you it's killing him not to be here. I, I know it's killing him not to be here. I ran, I got the opportunity this year to also run what was called the Player of the Year. It's the first time ever a Player of the Year has been called uh, with its own award outside of what the Buffalo News did for Player of the Year. You had somebody on that, on that this year. That gentleman who was on there, when I talked to him on the phone, said, please, can I make sure my coach is there? I want my coach there. He's the reason why I got here, is what he told me. That right there says a lot. Just please, if you can really reconsider this, I really think it'll be good for the community, good for the board, good for a lot of people, not only in this community, but also outside this community. Because the baseball community really believes in Marty's coach. Thank you. So we know, and you should know, and I'm sure you've heard it many, many times now, how many people support and love this man, but yet you still made the decision not to renew his contract. So I don't have faith. So we can go through this and go through all the things we believe in Marvin. We know I believe in Marvin wholeheartedly. But we lost. If you continue to this, you can continue not to give us. And quite honestly, this is no disrespect to that individual. A lot of us felt, at least in my heart, that it was lip service. That we went there that day, and we told you all the positive things about Marv, but yet the decision was the same. We're not going to read it. And I just don't understand it. So I strongly disagree, and I am very disappointed at your decision not to read Coach Bannister's contract. And not only that, we lost another great coach, Coach Snyder. Another fine man and another great coach. So we lost two. And what happened? What happened on a short-term basis? Well, SEPA is one of the teams that Coach, Matt, Coach Marv put together. And no fault of the volunteer coach that ran that. No fault of his at all. But the kids didn't have their heart soul into it. So that got disbanded. So we didn't have basically a SEPA there this year. Then PAL. Okay? Marv put together PAL. So the kids didn't play PAL either. It was a horrendous summer. So we talked about Marvin, and I can tell you the echoes. I love Marvin. I'll tell you that right now. I love Coach Snyder. I've been around coaching my entire life. I was a professional coach for 39 years until my retirement. I did this my full-time job. Not in basketball, baseball, but in basketball. I've been around student athletes. As the gentleman and the lady said, no coach is perfect. Nowadays, this is the feeling we get, Mr. Schofield. The feeling we get in today's culture, if Marvin might have said something kidding around, all right, Something that anybody, anybody can take something that anybody says. A teacher could come to you, Mr. Schofield, and say, and a parent of a teacher could come to you and say, hey, uh, Mrs. So-and-so said something to my daughter. I found that abusive. Well, you can say anything nowadays that could turn into an abusive thing. I've been around this baseball team. These kids right here can tell you, parents can tell you, Matt wasn't abusive. 
He was a down, he's a down-to-earth guy who relates so well with these kids. I could look back, and I said this before, you could look back in my history as a college basketball coach for almost 40 years. You could look back in my history. I'm sure there was something I said that some parent, okay, something I did that some parent could say that I, I'm an abuser. You know, fire the guy. Anybody can do that. I can research and, and tell you what's out there, Mr. Schofield and Gordon. What's out there is that there is that this all was initiated by a. This is what's out there. Now you know the truth. Only you can go to bed at night saying, "Am I doing the right thing?" Or and this is another thing that's out there. This is what people are saying. He is afraid. The board is afraid of a lawsuit. It's the easy way out to fire a coach. That's the easy way out. That's what people are saying. That you didn't have. And I don't mean this disrespect, but if we talked in your office, and I think you're a fine gentleman. I think you're making a horrendous decision, but I think you're a fine gentleman. All right? All right? You have even told me personally the accolades of Mark and what he does, and all these people are, are following suit with that. Is a teacher going to come up to you, Mr. Schofield, a music teacher, and going to say, my kid was said something to him, or she threw a... She threw maybe a volleyball at him in gym class and it hit her in her head. And the teacher, this that teacher really didn't beat him. Oh, that physical education is abusive. We got it on film. How you got, you know what he, you know, can of worms you're opening up for yourself? Okay? So I just think you're just not listening to people. You're listening to a few people. Three, four, I don't know how many, but you're not listening to the important ones. These kids sitting in the front row there and some in the back, you're not listening to them. And I also, I have questions for you. I don't know if this is proper or not, because I've never been to a board meeting since I've been my fourth years I've been down this. All right, so I never went to a board meeting. So I don't know if it's a proper protocol, and you can correct me on that. But what was your procedure, okay? Did you call down, now you listened to the disgruntled parents, correct? Yeah, we always follow our procedure. You always follow, that's, that's, that's only normal. Yeah. Did you call in, I want to know, did you call in Nine disgruntled parents, supportive parents. Did you get on the phone and initiate, not them calling you, did you initiate the calls to the support other parents on the team? Could you answer that for me? Okay, so then, see, you know, we're in a, and I'm no disrespect, it's no disrespect, but we're supposed to be in a, a culture of transparency. Well, I don't think anybody at home thinks you're too transparent. Because we think that you're hiding behind, you're hiding behind rules and regulations not to discuss personal matters. But we talk amongst yourselves. Okay, we talk <coughs> among our, I'll wait for you to finish. To, to answer that question, do we call in people? And what we do is, when any initial complaint comes in, this is for all, it's not just this case. Okay. It's for anyone I mentioned, we had a personal knowledge earlier today, okay? Can we call in people with first-hand knowledge? So, is it a case where you call in every single person that's going to say accolades on someone? No, okay. anything. You don't have to, you don't know if they're calling accolades. You just call up no, one of these kids' parents. Based on where a situation would happen, we would call in people that would have first-hand knowledge. And we always look for non-biased views in that too. Right? So how many did you call in? The different, well, I'm not going to get into the investigation. You can't even tell me how, you don't tell me who, just tell me how many. We, we call in everyone that we feel has first-hand knowledge. Did you call an equal amount of disgruntled parents as you did equal amount of support parents? That's where I'm not going to get into, uh, into the okay. nuance well, of that's, the investigation. That response, Mr. Schofield, all due respect, does not, in my personal opinion, and maybe some of the personal opinions of these people out here, does not give you a lot of respect. Because you won't answer a simple question, but yet you're gonna fire a great man and then along with him, another great coach is gonna go along with him. So you won't be transparent. In the age of transparency, Iroquois, I guess, is not transparent. Okay, uh, and I'll try to be brief, although I'm not. Okay, you answered the question about the board, the board vote. Okay, so you don't get a vote from the board, correct? You get advice from the board, and then you make your decision. Is that how it went? I don't want to say I give advice. I fill in the board on the situation. It's not. It's an executive session, so I really can't answer. So you can't even answer if they give you advice. You can't even answer if they give you their opinion. I'm not going to talk about. Okay, so we're to over two. It's not a good vote yet. Um, let's ask another question. Okay, we're probably going to go over three. 
okay? That's just a prediction. Uh, were you afraid of a lawsuit by the disgruntled parent? Are you, are you afraid of a lawsuit by the disgruntled parents? I want to go there. I can tell you for a fact that the court did not make decisions based on this program. Okay, that's good. Okay, very good. Okay, I don't know if we believe you, but um, I understand where you're coming from, and I respect that. Okay, but I'm just telling you the flavor of what's out among us. Those are the, the type of things. Oh, uh, they're afraid of a lawsuit from the struggle there. They didn't, you know, and let me ask you another question, Mr. Schofield. When you interviewed, when you interviewed players, you call players down, I know you, because my friend's on players on it too, and he, he has a lot of respect for you, he loves you. Okay. When you call down players, did you give them the same amount of time you gave each player? So it was it a consistent interview process? Was it a consistent? Each player was given the same amount of time. They all were interviewed directly by you. There was no panel, or was some interviewed by a panel, some interviewed by you, some got five minutes, some got 15 minutes. I want to know the legal, the, the actual, protocol that, and I'm sure there's protocol, isn't there, in these matters? I don't think you just go out and do things. So what was your protocol? Uh, just to correct some of this, I did not interview the students as a whole. That was done by the administration in the high school. Okay. Um, so I did call down all the students, and they were given, based on how they're answering, they're in there for different lengths of time. Um, and always the questions are of the same flavor. I don't know what they were, but the reason I say that is that's the protocol. I would expect the administration to follow it. What was the administration like? Assistant principals? Uh, I would be assistant principal and principal. So he so called. two assistant principals and a principal. So they divide that up however they do it. And that's a normal protocol. Normal so protocol. Was there a protocol in writing? What was that? Is the protocol in writing? Um, I would have to look at it, but that's how it's done for anything, whether it's, it's, it's a procedure. So the students are called in any procedure of this nature. Students are called by the assistant principal. Each of them is given the same amount of time, and given the same amount of questions. There was no panel that interviewed any of the students. None of the student athletes were in front of the panel, correct? I don't know what you mean by a panel. Like three or four people. So, uh, no. Did they have an attorney present? Did they have an attorney present? We typically do not allow for questions like this. We also. Um, but we're, listen, I'm an ultimate taxpayer. And you are, you are an elected official. And we I don't think we need to sponsor this, but you need to follow certain rules and regulations. And we pay your salary. No, you don't get a salary. So <laughs> we thank you. <laughs> and I don't know why the heck you do this, but that's your, that's your problem. But, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 but Mr. Schofield gets paid a decent salary. We can look it up. We know he's paid well, and he should be paid well. He's got a lot of responsibility. I respect that. But it's an age of transparency. So we're going to go away to this meeting. Everybody's going to say, oh, great things about Mark Madison. And I like Coach Carter, too. Two great guys. All right, we're going to go away for this meeting. I'm going to tell you all really good things about it. And then tomorrow we're going to say, oh, nothing's changed. It's all the same. All right? We need to know, as an uncle resident, I pay pretty good taxes. Okay. We can know all the residents something. You, you don't give us the protocol. You don't answer questions. So I guess the age of transparency is not in the Iroquois community. I, maybe I should have known that before I moved there. It's, 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 we do have a, a, a policy that we follow that says that we can speak to the students. We've now been speaking for almost 15 minutes. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for so, letting me know that. Thank you for your comments. Okay. I think it's time. I have one more question. Right Okay, I'm not going to leave you Was this initiated by disgruntled parents? Could you answer that? This whole thing into Mark Madison, was this initiated by disgruntled parents? Again, that is part of the investigation. That is part of the personnel file. That's not something that gets in the okay, I'll just include that. Obviously, I support Mark Madison and Coach Snyder. I appreciate your opportunity to come here. I am frustrated, disgruntled, and not happy with your, your answers. I do respect your positions, though. We appreciate you. I completely Thank you. understand.
It's my pleasure to address the administration and the Board of Education uh, as a, in a common sense approach and a voice of reason approach. And I sit on the board for 15 years, so I fully understand what you do and how, you, how it's all handled. Uh, there's always two sides in every situation in controversy. And I'm pretty well aware of being involved with the uh, team and things, both sides of the, the pros and cons of this controversy. And I feel very, and, and also the outside influences that affected the uh, recommendation. Uh, in this case, just maybe a decision was made early on weighing mostly one side, the cons, and a lot of the pros that you're hearing now I don't know if you've heard and could really evaluate fairly. Uh, but you know, and I do know that the cons came over a period of time. But there's nothing just strong enough, any one of them, to, to cause a recommendation of this nature. If everything that is now known was originally on the table, a different recommendation to the Board of Education may have been made. In this case, it's not too late for the administration and the Board of Education to think somewhat with clearer heads and more information. I was impressed at the last meeting when the superintendent took the pressure off the board and said it's my decision, but decisions always been down the board. Superintendent works for the board. So, you know, I do, I do respect that and uh, I think it's a, a nice uh, gesture. But here we have two Wall of Fame coaches with over 100 years of coaching experience and over 80 years of classroom teaching students and athletes. And all they're doing is requesting one final season to do what they love and they will graciously retire. The school district still controls the final outcome. All you're doing is one more year. You still control the final outcome and you have a graceful way out of it instead of making our school district look bad throughout Western New York. Uh, we've been on radio shows inside high school sports, Western New York athletics, and we really look pretty bad. And I think there's people here tonight that may talk about some other areas. And this is an area that we could rectify. The school district you know, still has control of the final outcome and drastically it would improve our, our entire image. The Iroquois baseball program flourished under these two coaches and has sent more players on to college to further their education while playing the sport they love than probably any other sport here at Iroquois. Coach Madison has recently been nominated for Section 6 Hall of Fame. The Section 6 Hall of Fame contains 95 school districts, public school districts, plus some charter schools now. That's a mighty large area to get nominated for the Hall of Fame and be without a really solid criminal type thing to let him go in the last year. It's just sad. Uh, the only other person, Miracoy, that's in the uh, Section 6 Hall of Fame is Chuck Funky. And Chuck spent, uh, I believe it was 32 years as Section 6 football chairman. I have been, I've been told by members of the Section 6 selection committee that Marv Madison is a no-brainer to be selected uh, in the vote and he'll be installed in 2020 uh, season. Uh, because the nomination just came up, the 1919 ones are already in, that, that is in December of this year. So Mar would be in the 2020 class. But our, our district is currently maligned by many sports enthusiasts, enthusiasts for previous decisions and you all, administration and board of education members, have an opportunity to right or wrong here for one more year. The one year makes a decision that makes the majority of our community proud and just may help hundreds or even thousands of future athletes throughout Western New York. Wasn't what, what wasn't mentioned here tonight, with something like this happens, coaches decide, I'll keep two or three less kids because I don't want complaints, I don't want problems. Well, baseball keeps three less kids on the roster. Over 10 year period, that's 2,400 kids just for baseball. That doesn't count boys and girls sports, you know, softball, all the other sports. You know, so the coaches may keep a few less players because of this and not do our kids justice. So with that, I thank you. And my hope is that you know, all administrators and elected board of education members will be voices of reason <coughs> for these outstanding coaches 
especially for our student athletes and especially for the greater Iroquois school community. Thank you.